We've all done this. We've all once needed to connect two redstone devices together and ended up having to build something like this. Ooh. Now it goes without saying that this is ugly. It takes a ton of space, wastes a ton of resources, and it's just overall a pain to build, especially if there's a huge distance between the two of your redstone devices. So what if there was a way to consolidate all of this into a single redstone wire? Well, in this video, that's what we're gonna be looking at. We're gonna be looking at multiple different methods of doing this, starting with the simplest. And of course, if you wanna build any of these, there's a free world download in the description. So definitely go grab that out, and without further ado, let's get into it. First, there's a synchronous transfer. Now, of course, this method works extremely well, especially considering the little amount of redstone that goes into it. And yes, most importantly, it works on a single wire. So how does it work, you might ask? Well, if we slow it down and look at it from above, you can see that it scans the inputs and then sends the state of the input one by one to the receiver. And the receiver being synchronized to the inputs well, it received the state of the input of them one by one to the correct slot. Told you it was simple. This method is great because of course it's really simple to make. And also, it's entirely spam proof. If your friend comes and raid your whatever, your redstone contraption and just goes crazy on your levers, well, it's not gonna bug out. And of course, like everything in life, it's not perfect. And in fact, it has quite a bit of downsides. And the first being, of course, that the timings are inconsistent. You know, it can travel super fast or it can travel super slowly because, of course, it's a clock that scans it. And for some redstone contraptions, that just doesn't make any sense. And also, of course, because it's a clock that scans the input one by one, well, if you add more inputs, well, it's gonna take more time to scan the whole thing. Therefore, it's gonna be slower. But of course, the biggest downfall of this design is the fact that it relies on two synchronized clocks to function properly. And it's super easy to get them this synchronized. You just walk out of your simulation distance and boom, your clocks aren't synchronized anymore. And now your inputs don't match up with your outputs anymore. Goes without saying that this disqualifies it from a lot of redstone contraptions. <laughs> But that doesn't keep engineers from implementing it in real life. You see, Toslink and SPDEF, both audio formats, use this method to transmit audio. Now you can see how this can be problematic for causing distortion in audio, but they don't care. All they want is saving 50 cents. Anyways, that brings me to our second option, synchronous transfer with a clock signal. Now this one is extremely similar to the first one, meaning that it's also a clock scanning the inputs and sending the data to the one over there. But the only difference is that, you see, it has two wires. One for the clock wire. You see, the way that it works is that each and every single time that the clock returns to the first position, when well, it sends a signal to this one to be at the first position and then scan the rest, which means that it never desynchronizes. And with that, alongside its spam-proof capabilities, well, it makes it for an extremely good option if you want signal integrity at all costs. And don't mind the extra wire. Uh, <clears throat> now, of course, with this method being very similar to the first one, it also shares quite a few downsides, meaning that it doesn't have consistent propagation delays, just like the first one. And also, it becomes slower as you add inputs, just like the first one. But one of its major other upsides is that you can split your receivers across your redstone builds, meaning that you can put them wherever you want as long as you route those two wires, which is honestly very useful for a lot of builds. Now onto the third option, asynchronous transfer. Now, as you can see, this one also runs on a single wire. And it's basically if we combine the clock and the single wire together in a single wire. 
Now you see the way that this one works is that when you click a lever it sends a first pulse and then it sends a second pulse with a delay later. And depending on that delay it makes for a different input slash output. So as you can see the first lever has a very short delay. The two pulses happen very close to each other. And the last lever, well, it has a long delay. The pulses happen with a very long time between each other. So this one is a single wire transmitter that's relatively simple and never desyncs. But you're sacrificing quite a bit for that single wire. You see, this one is far from being spam proof. If I flick a lever and I'm not patient enough and I don't wait until this one is turned on to flick another lever, well, it messes up completely. Not only that, but it's also the slowest method by far so far. And on top of that, it also slows down when you increase the number of inputs because the more you need a delay difference between the first and second pulse. But one of its major upsides is, is that it can be very compact. And in applications where it doesn't need to be fast, like in this iPod that I make, where realistically you only select like a vinyl every, what, like three minutes, well, it's a very good option. If you haven't seen that video, definitely go check it out. And also, just like the previous one, you can also branch off the output based on this single wire, which is pretty useful. And also, it's the first one so far that has consistent propagation delays. They vary between the outputs, but they're consistent. At least some guys know how to do it properly. Anyways, when I was talking about USB audio or Toslink SPDEF, there was always a binary in parenthesis. What is that? Well, that's where we're gonna be jumping in. Okay, so let's go over why binary is such an efficiency improvement. So let's say we have five redstone lines here. In all of our previous methods, we were only using one line at a time. We were only actuating one line at a time. And that means during that time that we're only actuating one line at a time, we're wasting the potential of all of the other lines to carry information. For example, we could, we could actuate those two lines at the same time and it could be different from this, or let's say this could be different from this. Boom. Now you know what binary is. Yes, it's really that simple. In a nutshell, binary is simply a method, a way for us to take advantage of all of the information that these lines are capable of transmitting at a certain point of time. Which is, of course, incredibly useful for us. Which brings me to our fourth option, parallel binary. Now this one is the fastest by far out of all methods. It's extremely fast, extremely reliable, and somewhat spam proof. And as you can see, this one has three lines. And it has three lines because it's operating on seven levers. You see, the way that binary works is that every time you add a line, you double the amount of information you can carry. For example, if I have only one line, I can only transmit two states, on or off. But if I have two lines, then suddenly I have this option both off, this option one on, one off, this option, and this option, etc. And with three lines, when you have eight options, and the only reason why I only have seven is because I excluded the option that you have zero. And you can keep on going just forever. You see, with five lines like this, you actually have 32 options. With six lines, you have 64 options. With eight lines, you have 256 options. And the best part of this option is that you can scale it indefinitely without slowing down. You can have eight lines with 256 levers, and it would be as fast as this one. Because you see, we're transmitting all of the lines at the exact same time. We're not relying on any clocks on any timings here. You see, the way that it works is that each and every single lever actuates at the same time its own combination of the three lines. So for example, the first lever actuates only the first line, the th second lever, the second line, and the third lever, well, this first and second line, and etc. And the receiving end of it, 
Well, it's the same thing, just in reverse. You see, everyone has its own code as well. So the first one here, well, it requires the first line to be on, but the other two to be off to actuate, and etc. For example, that's the method that I'm using to hook up my keyboard with my messaging machine. And obviously, well, the keyboard has a whole alphabet on it. It has special characters, it has commands, and even a do not disturb button. All on six wires. And of course, well, you can absolutely spam this keyboard super fast. It won't make any mistakes. It's honestly super satisfying. Super fast too. <laughs> Which makes this my favorite method. Because it has a lot of pros and not a lot of cons. This is by far the fastest method. It's as fast as a wire array. As fast. And it's basically spam proof. Also, you can also branch it just like you do with other methods. And the timings are identical and consistent all the time. It's like it's a no compromise thing. The only cons that I would note about this method would be that it requires more than one wire. Also, the redstone is a little bit more bulky than the other mechanism. Although it's very simple as well. As for real life applications, well, the only connector I can think of is DB25. The old connector you see on old computers. Because we've moved away from parallel binary into something more modern. Which brings me to the fifth method. Serial binary. Now this one, as you might have noticed, well, it's binary, but with a single wire. Now there are multiple ways to implement this, and it's using a combination of the binary and the previous methods that we used before. Now I think that the most efficient method for this is to use this one, the asynchronous, alongside the binary, and that's what we get. And as you can see, it's a nice in-between between the binary and the other methods as it's pretty fast, the timings are consistent, it's not very spam-proof, but it's not, it's no slouch either. Okay, so the way that this one works is with the same core as our previous method, with each lever having its own combination of the three wires. The only difference with this one is that instead, we're scanning each wire every, every time someone actuates a lever. So someone actuates a lever, we're scanning the lever, we send the state of this one first, then this one, and then this one. And then the receiver here decodes this, just like this one. And there you have it, binary on a single wire. Now of course, as I said, there are multiple ways you could implement this. You could use the asynchronous method or the synchronous method, but as I previously said, we're using the asynchronous method. Meaning that every time we actuate a lever, we send a first pulse telling the receiver, hey, I'm about to send the binary value. And then we scan the binary values. And that essentially tells the receiver when the timings are so that we don't obtain jitter in binary because that would be much more catastrophic than this. Now, of course, you guessed it. This is the method that I'm using to send and receive messages with my messaging machines with only one wire. So, of course, this is a really good method if you want max speed and max reliability over a single wire. Now, of course, it does have a couple of cons. Now, obviously, this is a little bit complex. You have to fiddle with a lot of timings to get it to work perfectly. And yeah, the redstone is even more bulky than the previous binary. Also, this one is not really spam-proof, but it does have consistent timings across all outputs. And it is significantly faster than any of the other methods using a single wire. And as for real life applications, well, we have USB 2.0. Yep, that's right, your USB connector uses this exact method to transmit your data. Now, of course, it's hard to compare real life electronics with Redstone because Redstone is freaking slow. USB 2.0 has a clock of 
480 megahertz. Megahertz. Millions of hertz. This? Five hertz! <laughs> yes, five hertz in the single digits of hertz. So although we're using the same method as USB 2.0, we are not getting USB speeds in Minecraft. <laughs> Anyways, one key advantage of all of these methods that I mentioned in this video that I haven't mentioned yet is the ability to reorganize your outputs however you want. And that is incredibly useful because gone are the days you're gonna have to make a friggin' mess of wire just to reorganize your wire array. And especially with the parallel binary method because you're not losing any speed. So you can reorganize your wires however you want without losing speeds and without creating an absolute mess. And don't forget, if you want to build any of these, the world download is in the description. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, well, please leave a like. And if you want to see other videos like this, well, subscribe. And with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one.